Okay, so went to the doctor about my hair loss and it turns out that I have alopecia areata, which basically means I'm losing my hair in patches. Now my hair is growing back teensy tiny amounts, but still there needs to be some kind of intervention. So we're gonna use a topical ointment twice a day for a month to these kind of spots here to see if we can get some hair growth back. I'm going for a bike ride today. <laughs> Ooh. Well, <laughs> you can see that my hair is not growing back right away. Actually, I got some fuzziness going on here. The funny part is that my hair is growing back in circles and and they're, it's like white hair. Oh gosh, you guys. What a crazy year, right? Holy cow. So about June of 2020, I noticed that I had these big, huge, like bald spots in the back of my head was a big one. And I was, you know, combing my hair, brushing my hair out and stuff. And I was like, wait a minute. What's that? What's this? How come my M, the M on my forehead is getting so deep and big? What is going on? So showed my transplant doctor because I just thought it's got to have something to do with that. You know, it's got to have something to do with my health. The thing about this weird condition is that nobody really knows what it's from. It could be from medication. Your body attacks, your immune system attacks your hair follicles. So it's sort of like a autoimmune response. There have been people that have lost their hair because of immunosuppressants. I mean, I'm on prednisone. Check me out. I got like the moon face going and everything. <laughs> Look at these cheeks. Oh. Um, you know, I cut it short at first and that really helped, but it just kept falling out, you know, in clumps and put my fingers through my hair and it would like come out with a big chunk of hair that was depressing i think that was worse than when i finally decided you know what just buzz it off um because now at least when it falls out i don't even notice you know um, i have had several injections into my scalp it's steroids to uh you know, try to curb the inflammation caused by this immune response. And actually it didn't hurt at all. So I think I could get a tattoo. <laughs> Why am I sharing all of this with you? I think because you're gonna see some pictures of me with no hair and I kind of wanted to just put it out there. What is going on? Okay, so number one, I don't have cancer. So <laughs> I'm not dying. Number two, I'm not dying. I'm okay, just having a weird time, right? I think everybody's having a weird time. This has been a weird year. I also wanted to be really candid with you, human to human, about my hair. I stopped everything last year uh, once COVID hit. I just stopped, I just kind of fell off the planet because I just felt like I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I don't know what I want to say. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I'm lost. I felt really super lost. And ironically, my hair, losing my hair has given me a, a paradigm shift, has helped me to find my focus. This is, this is me getting real with you. So if you don't want to go, if you don't want to go there, if you don't want to get deep with me, just go ahead and put stop. You know, I hid behind my hair. I thought, you know, when I go into public, one, the first thing people see is that I'm using wheelchair. And 
I think it's natural and normal for, pre for people to instantaneously refer back to what they know about what they see. To categorize it, to understand it, right? We're trying to understand one another. And the first thing that we do when we see something that's different or out of the norm is we refer, we go through our, our Rolodex. Okay, where have I seen that before? What are my references, right? Well, I kind of know what a lot of the general references are about someone with a disability. Be uncomfortable to be around. They might say something uncomfortable. They might look weird. They are probably sick. They need help, right? So those are just, those are all generalizations. I really thought my hair protected me from some of that stigma. That, yeah, I use a wheelchair, but I look healthy. I look strong. I'm vivacious. I have cute blonde hair, smiling, and alive and happy, right? So I thought that my hair was one of the ways that I that made me look attractive and would protect me from some of that stigma. Because I mean, now I go anywhere. I'm in, I'm using a wheelchair and I'm bald. So now, now I have even more stacked towards I'm ill, something's wrong with me, it's uncomfortable. I feel so sorry for her, right? That's a probably a big one. I feel so sorry for her. You know, empathy might be, what is, hap what is going on in her life? But the fact that anybody thinks anything about me is hard for someone like me who has stuck out their whole life. Sometimes I just want to be a wallflower and just meld into the racks of food in the in the grocery aisles. And so my hair isn't something that I can hide behind anymore. Also, just the whole idea that hair makes you beautiful, what is that about? What is happening there? I mean, we see it all over social media, in marketing, all kinds of hair products, things for women to do to their hair. And that's all really fun, actually. It's very fun to mess with your hair. This thing, this stuff that grows out of your scalp, that you can change colors and cut it and braid it and do all of these fun, fun things to your hair. And it changes the way you look and everything. If I'm relying on my hair for my value, and if I believe and buy into that, that I need this to be a different, better person. I need to get rid of the stigmas because that's not okay. It's not okay for people to think negative thoughts about me, that that's gonna somehow destroy my life what other people think about me is gonna somehow destroy me. It's false. That's not my value. I was born with intrinsic value. I was born with blood that pumps through my veins, cells that make up this being. My heart, my soul, at my core, what connects me to this beautiful earth, what connects me to the wind and the water. <laughs> I told you it was gonna get deep. <laughs> That's my intrinsic value. I'm a value because I'm a human being. And isn't it interesting, my life, my life has been pointing me in this direction for a very long time. But sometimes a person that's as stubborn as I am has to lose a lot. And maybe even the very thing that, pro that they think is protecting them in order to find themselves. <laughs> my hair, losing my hair has been both a challenge, a great catalyst for a paradigm shift to help me focus and what's really important to help me speak my truth, 
And that's it. <laughs> so you're gonna see me like this probably for a while. I'm just not ready to grow it out until I know it's gonna stop falling out. But look at me, I'm out here riding my bike. I'm out in nature. I got I have a real, a real smile on my face. <laughs> and I, you know what? I'm really enjoying, I'm enjoying my life. More to come. Let's get real. Let's get, let's get down and dirty. <laughs> and let's have a conversation. Let's have a real conversation about hair. <laughs> Thank you.